In this video, we're going to learn about ions. We will learn how and why ions form. We'll learn the difference between anions and cations. And finally, we'll learn a quick and easy way to determine the charge on an ion. Uh, so why do I have a picture here of a salt shaker? Well, that's because two extremely common ions can be found in table salt. And table salt is called sodium chloride, which is usually written like this, NaCl. And we'll talk about this particular uh, compound and these two ions specifically in this video. So let's start with the definition. So an ion is an atom or group of atoms with a net positive or negative charge. But how does an atom get this positive or negative charge? Well to understand this we have to revisit the atom and look at what the atom looks like. Now in the nucleus of the atom we have the protons and neutrons and they're pretty well stuck there. These aren't really going to be able to move around very much. Um, so let's just say it's impossible to remove one of those particles from the atom. Now this green particle here on the outside, this is the electron. And the electrons are different. They're actually pretty mobile. We know that they're kind of flying around the outside uh, of the atom here. And according to the cloud model, they can basically be moving around anywhere. Now the other thing that electrons can do is they can actually be pulled away from an atom or atoms can even attract electrons into themselves. And so why would an atom want to gain or lose electrons? Well, it comes down to a very simplified rule that's going to work most of the time. And this rule is called the octet rule. And here it is. The octet rule, again, works most of the time. And for our purposes, we're just going to say it works all the time. But this is what the octet rule says. It says that all atoms are trying to get eight electrons in their valence shell. And the valence shell is a fancy term for the outermost energy level of an electron, or the outermost shell. So if you think of Bohr's diagram, if you think of the very last ring that you draw, that's the valence shell. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at sodium and chlorine on the periodic table. Here's sodium, and then here's chlorine. And we're going to see how these particular atoms become ions. So let's start with chlorine. Here's a board uh, diagram for chlorine. And chlorine has 17 electrons. And we can see all 17 electrons there in green. And if I count the number of electrons in the valence shell, remember that's this outermost shell here, we get 7 electrons. And so chlorine wants to have 8 because all atoms want to have 8. And so it needs to gain an extra electron. So if we just added in an extra electron like that, then it would have 18 electrons. Now it has 8 electrons in the valence shell and so it's happy, but it's going to have a charge. So let's take a look at what the charge would be on chlorine. To understand the charge, we're going to have to look at the total number of protons in this ion, and then we'll also look at the total number of electrons now. So before anything happened here, and even now, we have the same number of protons. We have 17. That's the atomic number on chlorine. Now before we added that extra electron, there was 17 electrons as well, but now there's going to be 18 electrons. Now remember that protons are positively charged and electrons are negatively charged. And so this is really like a 17 positive and then we have this 18 negative. Now if we look at the difference between these, we could see that we have one extra electron. And since a positive one charge will completely cancel out a negative one charge, those will cancel each other, we're going to have an excess of a one negative charge. That'll be our excess here of charge. And so the charge on chlorine is actually negative one. Now a negative ion we call an anion. And so chlorine is an anion because it has a negative charge. And here's how we would write the symbol for uh, the chlorine ion. It'd be Cl, that's the symbol from the periodic table, and we just put that negative one charge there. We don't have to put the one, we can just put negative and assume that means one. Now one other thing to mention is that when we uh, are talking about the chlorine ion, we actually give it a specific name. We call it chloride. And any anion that is monatomic, in other words, only has one element, like chlorine, there's only the chlorine element, we call those monatomic. The prefix mono means one, and so we have a one atom ion here. We always change the ending of those ions to IDE, and so that's going to describe an anion. Okay, let's go ahead and look at sodium now. And sodium here, we can see on the periodic table, has 11 
electrons and so here is the Bohr diagram for sodium and we can see that it has that one electron in the valence shell this electron right here in the valence shell and so sodium should gain seven more electrons right well we could do that but that's gonna get pretty tough if you notice the next shell down this shell right in here has eight electrons so if sodium just got rid of that extra electron, it would have a new valence shell with eight electrons. And that's what sodium does. And all, all atoms are going to take the easiest route to get to eight. So if they only need to lose one or two or three electrons, they'll lose those rather than gain a whole bunch of extra electrons. Okay, so sodium, since it lost an electron, and electrons have a negative charge, sodium is going to have a positive charge. It's deficient by one electron. And the way that we would write this symbol would be Na with a plus in this. So that's the sodium ion. And we still call it sodium. We don't change the ending of positive ions, but positive ions are going to be called cations. Okay, now you may have noticed something interesting here. Sodium was losing an electron and chlorine was gaining an electron. And so why couldn't sodium have just given its electron over here to chlorine to give it eight electrons? And that's actually what happens. And so this is called an ionic compound when uh, one element gives its electron to another element. And ionic compounds are compounds that are composed of ions. And if we remember that sodium had a positive charge and chlorine had a negative charge and these charges since they're unlike are going to attract each other it's kind of like these magnets if you bring opposite poles of a magnet together they're going to attract to each other and stick together and that's ionic compounds okay finally here's that quick and easy way to determine the number of valence electrons and thus the charge of an element all we got to do is we got to take a look at the periodic table here and actually number the columns starting here with one and then two and what we actually also want to do is we want to ignore the transition metals. They don't follow this rule, and so we're just going to pretend for this particular um, rule here that they don't exist. So if we just kind of blank those out and come up with this new periodic table here, just kind of squeeze together the two halves here. Transition metals should have gone in between. But if we bring those together like this, then we can just number the columns all the way up from one to eight. And that's the number of valence electrons. So if I look down the first row here, everything, or sorry, first column, everything in that first column has one valence electron. And so everything in that first column is going to lose one electron and have a positive one charge. Everything in the second column will have a positive two charge. Now, once we get past number four, so in this fourth column, everything has four valence electrons and they actually aren't really going to lose or gain. They're actually going to generally share their electrons. We'll forget about those for now. We'll talk about them later. But once we get up to number five, that's when we start gaining the electrons. And so the fifth column here, starting with nitrogen, will have a three minus charge, and then a two minus charge, and a one minus charge. And then the last group here, the noble gases, they're not going to do anything because they've already been satisfied with that octet rule. They have eight electrons. And that is an introduction to ions.